Howdy everyone, I am Josh the Squash, and today I'm going to be giving you 10 tips on how to survive the nether. So you guys just recently helped me hit 75 subs, which is actually so amazing and I appreciate it so much. And that is also three fourths of the way to 100. So we're kind of on that home stretch now towards that huge milestone. So if you guys do find yourself enjoying the video and you want to help me out, make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe and ring the bell, all of which take literally, se literally five seconds and just really, really help me out. So without a doubt, let's go ahead and get right into it. So this isn't necessarily a tip, I'm just going to be showing you. So getting into the nether, there are several ways to do this. First, you can just go mine obsidian underground with a diamond pickaxe. Or if you're doing a speed run and you don't know how to make the nether portal like one of the big speedrunners like Dream or something like that, you can do it this way. So I'm going to show you if you do not know how to make a portal like Dream, I'm going to show you right now. So first off, you want a wall that is about four wide of lava so you want a lava area that's about four wide like this so find an area in a lava pit like this if not you can go ahead and build out until there's a wall of four but this is pretty good right here so once you've done that you're going to want to place a block kind of like right around here on your wall and then you're going to want to place your water bucket on the side of that block so that's going to make that part of it and then once you break this block it's going to make that part of it too but then you're going to have this part down here that's all stone. So what you're going to do is you're going to break that block and that block, right? And then once you've done that, you're going to take your bucket and you're going to fill in these spots down here with lava, like so. Now once you've done that, here is the little more complicated part. So this part, you're going to want to place two blocks right here, like so. If there's already two blocks placed there, that's just wonderful. So, but if you don't have two blocks placed here, go ahead and place two blocks right here. Then next, you want to break this block right here. So this block wants to be uh, empty real quick. So once that's done, you're just going to want to quickly, you're going to place three blocks up like so. And then you're going to place one right there. And then here, you're going to go ahead and you're going to get rid of your water real quick. And then, so you are in survival, so you are going to have just one bucket of water. I know I'm creative, so it's just, it's a little bit off, but it's, it works all the same. So then you're going to place your water bucket right here. And see how it just fills in that block, and then this block is a little bit glitched, so it doesn't go past, but it's this in this kind of shape, basically. So once you've done that, you're going to take your buckets of la uh, lava, and then you're going to place them here. And then here, 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 and here. Now obviously, once you learn this, it's going to go a lot faster, but for right now, that's exactly how you do it. Then you're going to go ahead, and you're going to take your water bucket right there. You're going to let that drain down, and boom, you have your 2 by 3 nether portal that works like any other nether portal in the game. It's it's actually a really good way to get to the nether if you don't have the chance to get a diamond pickaxe. It's, it's definitely the way to go. So for tip number one, we have preparation. Now this one is a pretty simple one really. It's just basically I'm showing you what you should have before you go and explore the nether. So with the new update, the, the game brought in a lot of new harmful enemies that can really damage you and new biomes that can be quite a problem too so you, de you definitely want to be prepared before you go into the nether especially if you're in hardcore because obviously if you die it's over so i'll just look in this chest real quick this is kind of the stuff i would recommend having before going into the nether obviously you can add more onto this list if you'd like so basically first off most of the time when you go to the nether um unless you're doing a speed run most of the time you're going to have diamonds because you're going to have the pickaxe uh you i mean you, you need the pickaxe to get the um, the nether portal and all that kind of stuff unless you did it the way I just showed you But I would definitely recommend these two weapons right here So you have the diamond sword and you have the diamond pickaxe and then at the very least I'd recommend having a full set of iron armor just because this is really really gonna help out So go ahead take that real quick. I'd also recommend having a shield now This is really 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 gonna help here. This is gonna help you against um, a lot of different enemies, especially if you spawn in the soul sand valley with a bunch of skeletons This shield is really gonna help out. So go ahead and take that out next I would definitely recommend having a bow. This is not a hundred percent something you need But with gas in the game, 
they can be very annoying if you don't have a bow. So definitely I would recommend having a bow. And then I would also say maybe bring a hay bale with you. And I'll get into this a little bit later when I get into the fall damage section of things. Then we have a bunch of beds too. I'll de I definitely recommend getting a bunch of beds just because um, beds you can use to block fall damage. And you can also use them to explode and get netherite and stuff like that. And the last thing I did that I would definitely recommend having um, that I didn't end up putting in the chest is just a bunch of blocks before you get into the nether. Because if you do spawn on a nether portal that's up high in the sky, I would def definitely recommend having a bunch of blocks so you can like bridge over to a certain spot. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think it's about time that we head straight into the nether. Alrighty, so it looks like we spawned straight into a Basalt Deltas, which is a very, very dangerous biome to say at the least. So this brings me to my second tip, and this is when you first get into the nether, you're going to want to make a big box around your nether portal made out of cobblestone. Now this could help out for multiple reasons. First off, it's going to help against gas, and it's not going to allow them to explode your portal because cobblestone cannot be exploded by gas. Second off, it's going to make it so mobs can't just jump in your house. So like a big magma cube, which you guys can hear behind me, um, it's just not going to allow those to get into your house. So go ahead, once you spawn into the nether, um, it looks like I'm kind of in a, like a little cave area already. So basically, Basically, if you're in an area like this, just go ahead and just start building right away. Just build around it because the basalt, um, most of the time in the basalt deltas, gas aren't really going to get to you. So in this in this circumstance, I would definitely just recommend just building kind of like around your environment. Use your environment to your advantage and just kind of build around that so you don't have to use quite as many cobble blocks. So just go ahead and make a little bit of a box around your house just so you don't end up dying right when you get into the nether. And yeah, so basically just... It's like a, a little bit of a box. It's 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 really simple, really. Just a, a cobblestone box. You can make it look nicer later if you'd like, or you can make it look nice in the beginning. But if if you just want to survive right when you get in, I would definitely recommend doing this, just because it's it's going to help you against a lot of mobs. Trust me, I've had I've had some encounters with mobs that that should not have been because I didn't use the cobble box. So basically. That's pretty much it. You just make a cobble box around your thing. You can put a door here if you'd like. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, now we're on to the next task. Alrighty, so for the next tip, we have how to get netherite easy. Now, these these tips don't have to be necessarily in order. Um, this one I'm doing next because I am in a very weird spot in the nether where I'm very, very high up. And navigating is going to be hard without a lodestone. And I'm going to get to navigation in a quick second after this one. But so basically I'm going to show you how or the easiest way to get netherite. So to start off, you want to be at Y level 15. And remember that that is the second thing over on the XYZ. So I am at Y level 15 right now. So the reason I say Y level 15 is because um, if you do it at Y level 12, you can find netherite at Y level 12, but if you do it at Y level 12, you're going to have lava dropping on your head. So when you're doing a Y level 15 and you're mining, you're going to have lava kind of pop up like at the eye level right here, and you're going to have an interesting time to say it the least. So, I mean, well, the, the eye level lava, you, you'll be able to see it before you get killed by the lava. But if you're down at Y level 12, you might have lava that's spawning at, um, just kind of on your, above your head where you don't see it before you mine. That's another tip I have for mining is just make sure to mine, uh, at a distance. So mine, like, kind of like back here, like what I'm doing right now. Just go ahead and do that when you're mining, just because it's definitely going to help, uh, just with the whole, the whole thing of everything. So, um, what next for that, you just want to be at what level 15 and you're going to want to go out about, um, well, I already went a decent amount, but I'll just show you basically what you should do. So go out about seven blocks. So seven, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And right about here, you're going to want to dig four blocks above you like so. Then you're going to want to place a bed here, right? Then you're going to want to place a cobblestone block here. And the reason I say this is if you do the bed in this direction do a cobblestone block, you're not going to take any damage in survival. So right here, you're going to go ahead, you're going to click on the bed, and you're going to have this area here, which I... Oh, 
So there you go. There you go. I thought I didn't see any netherite, but there we go. See, this is the easiest way to get netherite. Why level 15? It do this bed trick. I'll try to go a little bit farther and see if I get anything else. Another thing I would definitely recommend is once you do this, just make a little bit of a bridge just all the way across so you don't have to go down in the hole every single time because that can be quite dangerous just because there can be lava and stuff like that and fire and all that kind of stuff. So once you do here, once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're going to go one, two, three, four. Then you're going to go boom, bed. Then you're going to go cobblestone. And then you're going to click. And unluckily, this one, it does not look like we got any netherite. But back there, we got a netherite on first try. And uh, if you guys did not know, netherite, you need four ancient debris to... Um, to make a netherite bar as you need four ancient debris and then you need um four pieces of gold or four gold bars to make a netherite bar so it's quite pretty expensive but if you do that do it this way you're gonna have a pretty easy time in getting it so yeah we found our netherite and now we're off to the next tip so for tip number four we have navigation now this one can be quite tricky to find your way around the nether obviously with the new update it makes it even more difficult but one of the easiest ways to navigate the nether is to first have a lodestone compass now if you don't know how to make a lodestone i'm going to show you right now so first off as usual place your crafting table down and then go ahead and make yourself eight chiseled stone bricks which is pretty easy to do you just make a stone block uh, you smelt up to a stone block and you just use a stone cutter to make a stone brick or a chiseled stone brick. So once you've done this, go ahead and make a ring around this spot right here. And in this spot, you're going to go ahead and you're going to make a, uh, you're going to put your netherite ingot and that's how you get the lodestone. So from here on out, I would go ahead and put your lodestone in your little like area right here just so it doesn't get exploded by a ghast or anything. I'm just going to place mine right here. And then once you've done that, go ahead and use your compass on it and you have a lodestone compass so wherever you look in the map as you can see the compass is going to point to that lodestone which is actually pretty amazing so this is a really huge help in navigating the nether so once you've done that uh, as I said before, you want to bring a lot of blocks into the nether, and since I am in creative, um, I mean, I have infinite blocks anyway, but if you are in survival doing this, I would definitely recommend bringing a lot of blocks in, because if you spawn in the spot like this, where you have to go all the way up there and all that kind of stuff, um, you're going to need some blocks. So first off, you're just going to, like, you know, build your way up here, and when you are in a bastion, uh, not a bastion remnant, I'm totally blank, a basalt deltas, uh, you are going to have spots or patches of lava like this. And I have fallen in these before. If you guys did not see my speedrun live stream, uh, you definitely go check it out. Uh, that was a very interesting time. Um, I did end up falling in a little bit of a lava pit like this one, except it was a lot shallower and I didn't see it. So these in the basalt deltas, you're definitely going to want to be careful because there's these little spots like here. So you're going to be want to be very slow. You're going to want to kind of make a bridge over everything and make sure that you are as safe as possible. So once you've done that, you're just going to you're just going to get around here, just kind of go up in this area over here. So just just make your way around. And since you have your lodestone compass, you kind of know exactly where you've been. Just even with a lodestone compass, if you are in a basalt deltas area like this, you're just going to want to place little markers like that every once in a while just so you can see your way or just find your way through everything. So once you've done that, you're just kind of going to go gonna go around here just be careful not to fall in the lava because you fall in the lava it's gonna be over especially in hardcore that would very much suck i've had it happen to me before it's not a fun time so just navigate your way all the way down here wherever so this is an interesting spawn as i said so i am very 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 high up and then there's also um a lot of lava down there so this brings me in to the next spot and that is um fall damage so fall damage in the nether obviously here let me get this out real quick just to demonstrate this so if i am going to try to fall from like let's say this spot right here if i try to use the water bucket boom you can't do it you're gonna fall to your death that would very much suck however there are several other ways that you can block fall damage in the nether first off we have the hay bale and this is going to still make you take a little bit of damage however it's going to be a lot better than just dying so first off you got the hay bale and if you do not know how to do the um mlg like bailing or water bucketing or whatever uh just 
Make sure you practice it before doing what I'm about to do because it can go very wrong. You can end up dying too. So this is a very risky move, but if you want to do it, go ahead. So right here, we got this little ledge down here. So go ahead, drop straight off onto it and place your hay, ball, hay bale under you. You are going to take some damage. However, it's going to be a lot less than what you would do if you ended up dying. So once you've done that, you're just going to find your kind of way down all the way down to like a certain area like let's let's say over here. So break your hay bale under you and go all the way over here so we have another spot I can fall off onto right down here. Go ahead and place your hay bale under you, block your damage, and then you're just going to go ahead and you're going to bridge just until you know like get to a spot like, like let's let's say over here so you get to the spot over here and then we have a new biome which is definitely going to be better than the basalt deltas that we are in right now uh, but, but to the second part of fall damage there are a couple other things you can do to block it um, I just showed you the wheat bale one I'm going to show you two extra ones that are definitely going to help you out too so for the second one we have boating now you might be like hey you can't boat in lava that's not how it works and you can also do it like this. Now, this is also a very risky move. So if you go like this, you place the boat down and you get in it right before you hit that. That is a very risky move. That is a bit, that's even more risky than the hay billing because you have to have some very, very quick fingers to do that. Now, if you just want to get off, not take any damage, and it's just really simple, you basically just place the boat right here and you just fall off. Now, you will not take any damage in a boat as long as you don't fall into any lava or anything. So that's another way to block fall damage. And the third way to do it, there are more ways than just these, but these are the simplest ways that, that you already have the resources for. The third way to do it is just to, you know, you're going to jump off and you're going to place a bed. Oh, well, I didn't do it that time. See, this is another risky move. And especially in this biome with these weird like kind of block formations and stuff it's definitely kind of difficult to do this so um so you're gonna jump off like so i'm gonna put sit under you i did the wrong thing see i ex exploded the bed under me just make sure not to hit it twice otherwise you're gonna do exactly what i just did so go ahead jump off hit it once and then you're not gonna explode it just don't hit it twice like i did because you will end up killing yourself you're going to explode it, you're going to fly up in the sky, and you're going to die. So it's not going to go very well for you there. So that's pretty much it for fall damage. And now we are back to the navigation thing. So we have our lodestone compass. Just make sure um, when you are uh, exploring the nether, just make sure, as I said, to maybe make little landmarks and stuff, kind of like this, just to get around a little bit easier. And make sure I am in creative, as I said. So if you are in survival, maybe just make a little bit of a bridge across. And then to make it even safer, I would end up putting a side spot on it like this, like on each side, just so you don't end up having a bit of a problem with that, because this could... This could definitely be a problem in the nether, especially with gas where they can explode you off your little area. So yeah, that's pretty much it for navigation and with that we are in to the next tip. So for the next one we have getting gold and I would definitely recommend doing this one actually as one of the first things you do when you get in the nether. Maybe after you go ahead and make your cobble box. Since I spawned up in a weird basalt deltas biome, I didn't really have the option to get gold. But if you do spawn in an area, let's say like this. And I would definitely, re definitely recommend getting gold right away because it's going to protect you very, very well. And so first off, once you do that, I'm just going to go ahead and turn my game mode to survival real quick. So it's a little bit more relatable. Like so. And once you've done that, just go ahead and mine your gold out real quick. So I would definitely recommend once you first get into the nether, I would recommend getting about 36 gold nuggets. Now the reason for this is, is with 36 gold nuggets you can make, uh, you can make, sorry, I'm totally blanking right now, you can make 4 gold bars, and with 4 gold bars, uh, this guy is probably going to attack me since I am not wearing gold armor. That's the reason I say get 4 gold bars is to make gold boots, because these guys won't attack you when you are wearing gold boots. For some reason this guy's not attacking me, probably because he is a baby. But um, if it is a piglin like the one this right here, then you are going to have a little bit of a problem. So go ahead. If you do run into these dudes, use that. And then use your shield if you are trying to block these shots. That's why I said end up bringing a shield into the nether because it's really going to help you out. So once you've done that, go ahead and find your gold. The gold that I see is right up here. This guy's still not attacking me, which is a bit interesting. So get yourself your 36 gold. And I'm going to quickly get up here and grab that real quick. 
Now, also, when you are mining gold, make sure that the piglins cannot see you do it. Like, this guy might end up seeing me. I know the zombie piglins are not going to be a problem. If you see the zombie piglins with the green on them and stuff like that, it's not going to be a problem. Go ahead and mine your gold right in front of them. And, guys, I see another fortress down there. I'll get to that in a quick second. I'll get to the nether fortress thing in the end. But right now, we have to mine ourselves a little bit of gold. We have to get ourselves about 36 pieces of gold. So we have 34 right now. So we just need one more. That should be enough. And once you've done that, go ahead and place your... Um, crafting table down. I was lucky enough to get some gold leggings, so I wouldn't have to do this. But if you don't get the gold leggings, go ahead and make yourself four gold bars like so, and then make yourself some boots. I would definitely recommend getting boots because you can do a helmet too, but boots, um, they're going to use the least um, amount of armor. So if you do a chest plate, it's definitely going to be a little bit of a bother because it's not going to be what, nearly as much armor as you'd have if you were using uh, just... Uh, boots so so basically yeah you've gotten your gold and now this leads me on to the next task i'm going to go back to creative real quick so game mode creative so as you can see that gas shot me that would have been a bit of a problem survival but i am back in creative now so once you've done that we move on to the task of um trading trading so with the new update you have the piglins and they really love themselves some gold. So when you have the piglins and you want to trade with them, as I said, you got your 36 pieces of gold. But you're going to want more than that if you're going to want to trade with piglins. So go ahead, get yourselves your gold bar real quick. I am going to go ahead and get 64 because even creative I can't drop it. So what you're going to do is you're going to throw it on the ground. And this guy's going to pick it up. He's going to study it pretty much. He's going to study it for a little bit. And then eventually... He's going to throw you some stuff back. So look at that. I got some soul sand from that. And if you are lucky, he's going to give you ender pearls. Ender pearls are really, really going to help you out. Especially if you're doing a speed run, because then you can make eyes of ender and do all that kind of cool stuff. So look at that. He gave me some spectral arrows, which are another very, very cool thing. Um, another thing I definitely recommend with trading. So I'll go ahead and finish trading with this guy. But it looks, by the look of it, we have a bastion remnant right here guys oh no that's just a broken portal never mind but we have another fortress right here but let me see if i can find myself a bunch of piglins so here is the tip with trading if you can get a big group of piglins here you know what i'll end up doing i'll just end up making a uh yeah let's just get a piglin spawn egg and just spawn them right because if okay i definitely recommend getting maybe a group of like this amount of piglins and just throw as much gold as you can on the ground and they're going to study it, they're going to look at it, they're going to give you back a bunch of stuff. Now with this amount of piglins, you're going to get a lot of stuff back. Like look at all that stuff we just got with that. Then you can throw more gold on the ground, make sure that they all pick it up once they're done with that. See, look at this, I even got myself an enchantment book with soul speed on it, which is actually a pretty good trade. I also got myself some a water bottle and all that kind of stuff. I'm getting some really good stuff. Enchanted iron boots, they're just, they're giving me a bunch of stuff. So, when it comes to trading, try to find a big group of piglins and get yourself a large amount of gold and just throw it down for them to give you stuff i'm being very unlucky right now when it comes to getting ender pearls but if i am i'm not doing a speed run right now so it doesn't really matter so you've traded you've gotten your boots and all that kind of stuff so with those two things we move on to the next tip which is travel so for traveling the nether there are two simple ways to do it first off you have the classic bridging thing. Now you can do this faster, you can do it the skyblock way, or you can do it the way you're doing. Just completely smash your pinky down into that control key and just go all the way across as far as you can. Now this is what it would have been like if you were in the 1.15 update and you can still do it in 1.16 but in 1.16 they added an easier way of travel and as you can see these little guys over here we got them walking around. These are striders if you don't know what they are. You probably do if you're, watch if you're playing Minecraft and all that kind of stuff. So when you get into the nether, you're going to want to um, 
you're going to want to get yourself a saddle, right? Because th these dudes are really going to make it super easy to travel the nether. So first off, you want to get yourself a saddle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm in creative, as I said, multiple times. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to grab it in here. But if you are in survival, find it in a desert temple or something like that. So go ahead, get yourself a saddle, slap it on his head or his back or whatever you want to call it. And then you got yourself a saddle there. But if you do sit on it, I can't control this dude. I can't control it when I'm using the just the saddle. Now there is a way to control this guy, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. If you guys don't already know, I imagine you probably do because you guys have probably played the Nether update a bunch, but I'm just going to show you anyway. So once you have the saddle on his back, you're going to want to slap your crafting table down, and you're going to want to find a warped forest or a crimson forest, and there's going to be these warped fungus in those. You're going to throw that in your crafting table with a fishing rod right there, and here you got a warped fungus on a stick. Now, if I go to this dude with this in my hand, see, he's following me, see? He likes this warped fungus on a stick. So if I click on his head and I'm going, see, look at this. I can go ahead and I can go super speedy around, see? I mean, it's not too speedy. It's not the fastest thing in the world, although I am going a lot faster than if I had it to build a bridge across the lava. See, what I'm doing right now is I'm holding the shift key, and that just makes him sprint a little bit faster. If he is going the normal speed, he will slow down in a second, and it will show you how that works. So you have the warped fungus on a stick, and you can get around on the lava so much easier than you could if you were doing anything else. Now see, uh, just the one problem with this way of travel, and it is with the other way of travel too, is you got the gas. Now if gas are up in the sky shooting fireballs at you, you're going to have to be really good at uh, using this guy because they're going to want to kill you with all their might, and you're going to want to dodge with all your might. So you're just going to go back and forth. If you are doing counter a gas, go ahead, go back and forth. Just make sure you st keep running. Don't, make don't pause at all, otherwise you're going to have a problem. So with that... Now you can travel around the nether easy, right? You can get on the lava, you can go on the lava lakes. However, if you do get back to land and you want to travel land for a little while, I definitely would not recommend using this guy. Because as you can see, he gets all shivery, he look, it looks like you're abusing him, and you go very, very slow. So he, he doesn't look very happy right now. But if you go put him back in the lava, let's, let's go ahead and get back on his back. He, he feels a lot better when he's back in the lava. See, he's, he's all red again. He's all happy and all that kind of stuff. He's, he's looking pretty nice. So, well, that, that's pretty much travel. You can go ahead. You can do it the old way of just going and placing your blocks all the way across, which is a little bit risky. However, it does end up working. Or you can use a strider, which is definitely going to help too. This is probably the best way of travel in the nether, in my opinion, unless you are on land. If you, are, uh, if you do come across the lava lake, I would definitely recommend using a strider. Okay, so I was very, very lucky, and I found this fortress actually pretty quickly. So with the new update, they made fortresses even more rare than they already were, and now it's basically pretty much impossible to find a fortress. I mean, I was pretty lucky with this one. I found this one probably within like five minutes. However, I am in creative, so it does make it pretty easy. However, I have been in creative before. I've gone to the nether. I've searched for literally like probably 20 30 minutes never found a single fortress it is very very rare in 1.16 but if you do find a fortress i'm going to show you how to survive these things because these things can be very dangerous with magma cubes they can have wither skeletons and blazes there's a lot of things that can try to kill you in these fortresses and you got to be careful so to start off you got to get yourself up in the fortress and this is why i said bring a lot of blocks with you once again because what you, let's get it. so i'll just go ahead and you're going to get yourself up in the fortress just build yourself a little bit of a bridge if you are doing this just be very, very careful because once you do get up here, you might have a little bit of a problem with wither skeletons. So just make sure that you, you've scouted out the area and made sure that there aren't any wither skeletons up here trying to kill you. So next we have exploring the nether fortress. Now there are multiple ways to do this. You can just run all the way through the entire thing, remember which direction you're going. But if you're not very good at, if you're not very good at remembering which direction to go, I would recommend doing it the way that I am doing it right now. So the nether fortress can be a maze. You go off in one direction, you turn right, you go off in another direction, you turn left. And there's a lot of turns to get through a nether fortress. So to do it the right way, I would definitely recommend doing this. Whichever direction you turn, whichever direction you come from, 
I would recommend blocking off the other two directions so that you know which direction you come from and which direction you turn. Now this is definitely the way I recommend doing it. It's definitely the way I recommend doing it. So you go off in this direction, right? And then you got like another another area with two wither skeletons down here. Maybe you don't want to go off in that direction. So just go ahead, place your blocks there. And you don't want to go off in that direction because there's lava over there. So go ahead, place your blocks like that. You're going to go off in this direction. You're going to do that pretty much repeatedly until you find something useful. So next... We have to fight some wither skeletons, right? Because wither skeletons, they are gonna they are gonna be a problem at some point. I'll go back to the spot right here. So we got wither skeletons, right? Now these guys can be a serious problem in nether fortresses. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this. So game mode survival. I'll be a little bit more relatable again. So once you get into this area, this is when the shield and the sword comes very much in handy. So go ahead, mine this out, make sure these wither skeletons see you. Now this is an army of wither skeletons, so you're going to want to be careful here. So as with fighting all the enemies, you want to stay back a little bit, especially with wither skeletons, because if you get hit by them, I'll show you. See, you get this wither effect, and these are going to do a lot of damage to you. So they do just continuous damage over and over again. See, I'm getting damaged a lot, and it's being quite a bit of a problem so i'm going to go back to game mode creative just because i don't really want to have to deal with these guys right now i'm just showing you guys how to do it so yeah as i said with winter skeletons you want to go ahead and stay back a little bit make sure that they don't hit you if they do just sit here block with your shield let them hit then do your hit block with the shield as you normally do with minecraft enemies just the same with the wither skeletons just make sure to stay back a little bit more now when it comes to blazes they're going to try to attack you right they're going to shoot their fireballs and when they are about to shoot their fireballs i'll show you what they do so we're going to go back to survival and then they are going to when they do shoot their fireballs i'm not sure where this guy went see he, he gets all fiery, right? He gets all, like, on fire and stuff like that. Right now, he's not shooting his fireball. When he does that, make sure to block with your shield. Let him shoot his fire. If he does miss you, that's fine. And then just crit him to death. Because once you do that, you're going to get yourself a blaze rod. And with that, you can make some blaze powder and all that kind of stuff. So that's all good fun. So now that I've showed you how to just survive all that kind of stuff, it's, it's pretty simple, really. You've, done, you've basically done the nether fortress. You find yourself a blaze spawner, and that's definitely what I recommend doing first, is finding yourself a blaze spawner. Especially if you're doing a speed run, that's probably the thing that you want to do, is find yourself a blaze spawner right away. Because if you don't find a blaze spawner, you're going to have a little bit of a trouble having blazes to spawn, and it's going to be a little bit of a problem. So, as I said with exploring the nether fortress, block off the ways you aren't going. So if you're I'm going in this direction, just make sure that you just block those off and go off in the direction that you want to. So this is... It's pretty, it's pretty simple, really. See, I found a blaze spawner here, and with the blaze spawner, you're going to want to be careful. So what I would recommend doing is going like this, and if you are in survival, I would sit here and hit him from like a certain spot like this, or maybe even build up a little bit like that, and then hit them like under this block right here just because they won't be able to shoot you and you'll be able to hit them without them seeing you so this is definitely the way to do it if you are fighting blazes it's definitely if you don't want to end up dying if you don't have much armor or anything like that i would go ahead and do this if you want to get some some good blaze rods and good kills and all that kind of stuff so for the 10th and final tip i have for you today we have exploring bastion remnants now this is probably the most dangerous and risky tip out of all of them so far this is a very very dangerous place to be in the game probably one of the most dangerous places to be in the entire game of minecraft especially with the new 1.16.2 update where, uh, where you have all these piglin brutes running around wild and trying to kill you it's definitely going to be a problem because these guys even with gold boots they're going to attack you they're going to try to kill you and they're going to do an immense amount of damage to you so for these dudes, you're going to want to avoid them at all costs, but if you do end up having to fight this guy, I would definitely recommend maybe just blocking yourself. So go ahead, hit your hit your piglin, right? And once you've done that, once you're in survival, I would definitely recommend blocking yourself off in a little corner and just hitting him from right here because they won't be able to get you right here. I mean, the little baby will, but most of the time, you're not going to have little babies just, just all over the place. So you're going to have maybe one... Uh, baby piglin coming in and trying to kill you but once you've 
once you've hit your big piglin, you're just going to go ahead and you're going to sit here for a second because all the piglins are going to come in rushing to you, trying to kill you, and you're just going to sit here and you're going to farm. Now, this is probably a really easy way to do it. You just sit here, you farm, you get some gold, you get a bunch of stuff, you get a bunch of XP and all that kind of stuff. So, this is honestly the way, if you do get into a Bastion Remnant, I think if this guy does end up trying to kill you, I would hit him back real quick, get into a little corner like this, placing a block like that, and then just hitting him a bunch until he dies. Now, next we have the part of chess. Now, chess can be a problem in Bastion Remnants, because if you do open a chess when a piglin is just standing here like this, the piglin is going to try to kill you, because he's like, hey, don't steal my loot, that's my loot, boy. So, there's a way to get around this without having to bre without having to open the chest and getting the loot from the chest. So, the way to do this is, you break a block here and here, right? Then with that... You place a hopper right under the chest, and as you can see, the stuff from the chest is getting transferred into the hopper, and the piglins aren't getting mad at you. Obviously, I'm being creative, but if you were in survival, the piglins would not get mad at you because you do have the chest stuff. Uh, you do have the hopper under the chest, so let's do it with this one too. See, as you can see, with the chest, I did open it up so the piglins would have tried to attack me right now. But as you can see, the stuff is getting transferred all into the hopper down below. There's a Bane of Arthropods Iron Sword and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty awesome. Next, we have the second level of the Bastion Remnant. So if you go down here, let's let's just go down to the bottom floor of the Bastion Remnant. Now this is where the it's where the place really gets really risky. So you're gonna you're just gonna get your way. Let's say you make your way all the way down to the bottom floor. Now I'm, not, I'm having a little bit of a problem finding this place. I'm not exactly sure where it is, especially with this one. This one's a little bit confusing. Let's go ahead. Let's place a hopper under there and see what we're getting from that. So we just get some gilded blackstone. We get some gold leggings and all that kind of stuff. Now what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for this bottom floor of this Bastion Remnant, which does not seem to be accessible in this one. I'm not sure why. Most of the time when you have a Bastion Remnant, you're going to have a bottom floor area where there is a lot of, of loot and stuff like that. So next here, I'll just I'll just demonstrate it with for you guys real quick. So let's go ahead and let's find a group of piglins of some sort. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to find a... Oh, oh here, here we go. Here's the bottom floor right here. So... You have the bottom floor. The, in this, in these areas, you're gonna have, um, you're gonna have hoglins, which are also gonna be a problem. So when fighting hoglins, you gotta make sure that you are three blocks above them and that they cannot get up to you whatsoever. Because if you're two blocks above them, you hit them, they're gonna make you fly. They're gonna throw you into lava, and it's not gonna be a fun time. So yeah, definitely when you're fighting hoglins, as this is, goes with the same with crimson forces too. Uh, just go ahead, place your blocks three blocks high, and then you can go ahead and you can slice them to death like so. Now this sword has a immense amount of hit range, and see, got him pretty easily. So, but if you are in a crimson forest, let's say with a wooden sword, same thing works. Just gonna make sure that you're three blocks above them. So next we have the gold block aspect of things. Now this can be an also problem in the, the Bastion Remnant. So this goes with the same basically as chess. So if you break a gold block in a Bastion Remnant and you're in survival, it's gonna it's gonna be a fun time and a not fun time at the same time. So you're gonna have every piglin in the entire fortress that exists, they're all gonna be coming down and flooding through the doors and the walls and all that kind of stuff just to kill you because you stole their gold. This is a very risky move here. Now to uh if you don't if you do end up breaking a block of gold and you want to avoid this, you have a billion piglin coming down racing towards you just to kill you. Here's what I would recommend. Have a bunch of gold ingots in your inventory. If you don't have a bunch of gold ingots, make sure you're fast, make sure you're quick, and make sure to put this, slap this gold block down in the, in a uh, crafting table real quick. Make nine gold bars and just throw those down at the ground so the piglins don't attack you. So once they see the gold on the ground, they're going to go for the gold and they're not going to go for you. Now this is just going to give you a split second to get away as fast as possible because these piglins are going to do a lot of damage to you if you have like 50 of them here rushing for you. So that's pretty much it. We have uh, exploring the Bastion Remnant. That was It's pretty simple really. Just, just remember those tips. Remember to put the hopper under the chest 
always do that because if you open the chest and there are a bunch of piglins watching, they are going to kill you. That's that's all I'm gonna say. You're not gonna if you open the chest or do anything wrong in this area, the piglins are going to kill you unless you are some sort of master at the game. Even like the best players, they will destroy because they do a lot of damage, especially hoglins and piglins brutes, they do a lot of damage. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We have ten tips on how to explore the nether and just survive in the nether in general. We have the nether fortress, we have the bastion remnants, we have traveling, we have navigation, we have how to find netherite easily, we have trading, we have getting armor, we have cobble block around your um portal and then we have preparation to the nether so that's pretty much the 10 tips i would recommend you doing before you go or when you go into the nether just to survive better in the 1.16 update i know this is a bit late because most of the time or in the 1.16 update it came out like a long time ago but if you guys still are unsure on how to survive the nether just listen to these tips i really hope they helped you out and if they did as always make sure to hit the thumbs up subscribe and ring the bell, all of which take literally five seconds and really, really help me out. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one.